Yo, yo, what's up? It's me, DMC, and the place to be, and the only place for you to ever be is right here watching Loud Wire. None higher. We're doing this Raising Hell album. Everybody's loving us and mm -hmm. this and that. So we wanted to do a record that was going to just basically be... um, Because we always love to rap over Walk This Way at block parties and park parties. Before okay. Rappers Delight... Every MC rapped over Walk This Way. We didn't know it was Walk This Way. It was oh. just, yo, Jay, get the Toys in the Attic album out and play number four. I never gotcha. knew. And we had never heard the lyrics. The DJs would never let it play that far. It was, back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. We never got to hear the lyrics. What was going to happen was we was going to sample it have the riff come in and out and it had been like I'm DMC and the place to be the best MC in history there will never be an MC better than me I've been rhyming on the mic since 83 because it was 86 now and yeah. I'm DJ Ron and I'm number one I'm here to get it done and have some fun it was Rick Rubin walks into the studio while we're coming up with the loop for the record and Rick goes you know how Rick always go Hey guys, you know when Rick talks, his head moves up and down. It does it. And now he got the beard, so it's even more. If you look at him, <laughs> if you look at back interviews with him and the Beasties and see Rick in um, our movie Tougher Than Leather, hey guy, he always his head always does this and stuff. So he was like, "Hey guys, you know who that is?" And we was like, "No." He said, "Hey guys, you know what? You'll be a great idea. Y'all should do the record over." So me and Run was taken from our limited hip hop mind. What do you think we're going to do? We're going to sample the motherfucker and we're going to... He says, no, you should do the record over the way those guys did it. Jay, rest in peace, Jay was like, yo, that'll be a great idea. So me and Run was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all taking this rock rap thing too far because we had made Rock Box mm -hmm. and we made King of Rock. We wanted to rhyme about us. Rick took the record off the turntable, gave us some yellow notepads, that's still in existence, you know, the yellow notepad yeah. and a pen. Go sit over there and put the needle on the record, let the record play, listen to the lyrics and write them down so you can do them over. So me and Ron, we go down to my basement, we put the needle on the record, we got the yellow notepad and a pen out and put the needle on the record because it's static and the dust. It's like boom, that, boom, boom, that, boom, that, boom, boom, that, boom, that, boom, that, and we waiting that, that. We went in and then Steven comes on backstroke lover in the hot and if it cover. This is on the, this is us on the phone. Oh hell no! We are not. This is country bumpkin mountain climbing hillbilly gibberish. You guys is real. Yo, we we, we uh. totally rebel. But with after a little um um coaxing from Jam Master J and Rick Rubin, we went and recorded the version that y'all hear today that people say is so phenomenal, but here's the killer thing. Even after we finished that, uh, we hit out for a week, and then Jay calls us, y'all gotta come to the studio right now. Rick then went to Boston and brought Steven Tyler and Joe Perry to the studio. So we get in the cars and leave Queens and we come in the studio. And we didn't know no better. We walk in the studio and we see Steven Tyler and Joe Perry. Yeah. But we didn't know no better. We was like, oh shit. Rick no went and got the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and Steve was humble. Steve was like, he laughed it off. He said, oh, no, 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 guys. Those are the other guys. Steve was like, we're Aerosmith. So we recorded the record. Um, the version that you hear today is what you hear. But here's me and Run. After that, we was leaving the studio. Time for us to go home because we mm -hmm. laid our vocals. We looked at everybody in that room and said, y'all can be happy as y'all want, but y'all better not put this record out as a single. Wow. Look at what it did now. So now yeah. when I go to schools and I talk to, you know, I go to a lot of high schools and middle schools mm -hmm. and I talk to the kids and I always say, always be open to try something <laughs> new because it might not just only change your life, it could change the world. Yeah. But that was the lesson in it. It was Rick's brilliance to, now, put it like this. If Run DMC would have sampled it and did what we did, it went not it would have just been. It would have just been like a good Run yeah. DMC song. If Run DMC, here's the, another kicker. If Run DMC would have did it the way we did it with them, without them, it mm, wouldn't. Yeah. But because we did it with them, changed everything. Exactly. So we, me and Run learned to be more open about things yeah. after that. How long did it take you to really realize how great that song was? Or to at, at least just um, like the song? It took a minute. It really, because because you know, on Raising Hell we had my Adidas and Peter Piper. Mm -hmm. This kept happening to us. I remember 
when when the Raising Hell album was out, we was on the Raising Hell tour, and then we came home for like a break. And uh, I remember Red Alerts, big shout out to Red Alert. I remember DJ Red Alert on the radio on the Red Alert show goes, I'm about to play the hottest rap song of the summer, hip hop song of the summer. Now me and Run knew it was either Peter Piper. Now Peter mm. Piper picked peppers and rum rock rhymes. Humpty Dumpty fell down. This is our time. We knew it was that all we knew. Because remember, we put out the first single was Ma Adidas, Peter Piper. We definitely knew it was going to be Ma Adidas. Walked through concert doors and roamed all over. Car. I stepped on stage. We knew it was that. Red Alert says, I'm about to play the hottest hip hop song of the year in summer now. He throws this motherfucker throws on walk this way. <laughs> Me and Run just looked at each other, what the hell? And that kept happening in the urban areas. Because what they did behind our backs was when they sent out Maditas and Peter Piper to the urban stations, they white labeled Aerosmith to walk this way. That went to all the black stations. The, 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 the Aerosmith record went to all the rock stations. Okay. And when it got to the rock stations, it was killing in the hood. But when it got to the rock stations, I remember in their hometown of Boston, the DJ goes, I know you heard of the guys run DMC. You know, they did the rock box thing and it was the first on MTV. Yeah. And then they did the King of Rock thing. Well, they have a new rock song. They actually did a remake of Aerosmith's Walk This Way. Y'all remember that song, this and that. I'm going to play it right now and I want y'all to call in to give me you know, a response and what you think about it. So they played the record. The response was 80-20. 80% loved it. Yo, play that again. That's better than an original version. Yeah. I'm not sure if I, if I really like it, could you play it again? But 20% of the real hardcore rock fans that wasn't open to, sure. this is blasphemy. <laughs> Who do these Run DMC guys think they are? This is disrespectful. If we see, like, it was crazy, but the overwhelming 80% made, the, you know, the rock stations play that version. And that, while that was happening, all the DJs, you know, they was playing Peter Piper and Ma Adidas and all, but they also was playing the Aerosmith song. Yeah. So that's crazy, yeah. right? So but what I was trying to say was Rick was brilliant to see that don't sample it, don't do it yourselves. We're going to remake it, and he took it another level. We're going to do it with them. 